Good morning everyone, it's Tess and today is take 38 and I wanted to talk a little bit about weight loss and loneliness and moving forward on this journey. Uh, a couple weeks ago I had to go in and, and do a, a, an appointment with my doctor and she was pushing. I really didn't want to go in due to COVID and I knew deep in my heart that she was pushing so much because she was afraid that being four to five years out I was starting to gain weight. And I, I know, even though she won't admit it, I know that was her concern. And so I started to kind of do a little um, research on loneliness because it's been coming up in several of the groups that I've been uh, following. And I thought, um, how, how is this impacting all of us? Because I see that word lonely, loneliness in a lot of areas. And when I was in my doctor's office, she goes, I wish, she goes, if you have opportunities, she goes, whatever it is you're doing, would you share? Because during COVID, I've lost over 30 pounds. And she's like, I, I see, she goes, you talk about the COVID-25. And she said, I'm going to tell you that I've seen a lot worse than that. And um, it kind of broke my heart because we're all struggling this together. And I can remember being that person. And I'm afraid of where I might have been if I hadn't had surgery and taken a hold and found tools long before this happened. So what I want to do is share some things that I've learned and read about and hope that maybe there's a tool here that might help you if you're struggling or loneliness. No, you can reach out. I'm here. Other people are here. There are groups here. And this can be an opportunity to change what your future looks like. I know for myself, um, I'm making plans for what I think my working retirement will look like and I'm, I'm getting excited about it. So finding something to be excited about during this time of loneliness and social social isolation could be a great gift to yourself. Um, we, we are, for the most part, socially distancing, staying at home. Things are starting to open up, but everything's at low capacities, 25%. Um, will I stay social distancing? Yes, because um, my parents are older and um, I don't want to take a chance on bringing anything to them. And I, I don't want to take any chance either because I don't know what the long-term long haulers or outliers are going to be if you do catch this disease. Um, we do know that if we're not properly eating or taking in nutrition, um, keeping our mindset right, we do know that our immune system can be compromised and that opens us up to this disease. So the sad part is in being remote, we can almost weaken our immune system and set ourselves up for having difficulty. Hi, Terry. Good morning. So what I wanted to kind of talk about is uh, it is difficult because we're socially distancing and that messes with our immune system. <coughs> boom, boom, my cat, she just knocked something off the table. But anyways, uh, we also know that our accountability systems are impacted. Like I used to go to groups all the time, probably three or four a month. Well, I can't do that. And I know some of them are holding remote Zoom meetings, but most of them are during the workday. And I, I'm blessed to still be working during the workday. Uh, we, we can fall into having old habits return because there's a comfort in what we once knew. Good morning, Yang. Thank you for listening. But we have old habits come forward and we need to fight those old habits because there's a comfort in those old habits. So I want to kind of share with you guys some of the things that I've done during COVID that have kept me busy and entertained so that I, hi Jane, so that I keep moving forward and I don't fall into my old patterns. One thing I did do that was really interesting is during COVID, I did some ancestry research and my great grandparents came over in the early 1900s and I never really knew much about them, but during COVID, I was able to find out that my great grandmother died of the Spanish flu pandemic in 1918. And my dad didn't know a lot about them either. Well, what I found out, and, and I'm so happy we're gonna actually put markers on their graves, they are they are buried local here, both my great grand both my great grandparents. And what we found out is she died in 1918 of the Spanish flu, leaving behind four children, the youngest of which was four years old. And within 10 years, the youngest child and the father died. So part of me wonders if that was related to after effects or long haulers from the Spanish flu. But we actually found where they're buried. They're in unmarked graves because, again, they had four children and both parents were gone before the oldest child was baby 
20 years old. So my dad wants to put markers on the graves this summer. But it was interesting because we were able to do some research and we kind of looked at where they came from. And, you know, there's something heartwarming about, you know, knowing where your family came from and knowing what kind of struggles. It's sad that they face struggles, but there's like a kinship and we found you. And we've actually driven by where they're buried and saw the beautiful cemetery they're in. They may be unmarked now, but they're claimed and we will have markers on the graves soon. Um, of course, because you can't do it in the middle of winter. But that was exciting and it was something we could look forward to. I know I've told you I'm in groups. I'm in Doc V's group. I'm in Chris Noggle's group. Doc V's group is about staying committed to this weight loss journey and dealing with my mind problems because yes, they get in the way. I know that I've also worked with Chris Noggle and he's the money man. So I've been working with him to just kind of think about how am I going to lay out my retirement. I've been following uh, Steve Sims, the blue fisher, and he is the guy that makes things happen. He, uh, he creates events and makes things happen. And it used to be for the rich and famous, but now what he does is he tries to help direct those of us that are not the rich and famous, but it's been interesting, these journeys, like following Chris, following Doc V, following Steve Sims. I've also recently found uh, Zahar Mahoon, which is a book on Limited, and she talks about uh, the law of attraction. And that's all about the mind, again, making sure that your, po your thoughts are drawing what you want to you. So I thought I would kind of share some things that have come to me lately, and um, Hopefully that one of these tools will help. We all have a different journey, but maybe something will help. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my vision board that I put together with Doc V. And this is kind of funny, but not funny. I put together this vision board about, you know, work from home, my garden. These are my ancestry trips. This is my volunteer work for the Tears Foundation. We help families who lose children. Uh, with grief and um, financial support for the burials. But then in this area is my new healthy me, and I found the body of a person who was at my goal weight, and I cut off my head and I attached it to her. So <laughs> that's kind of my inspiration that I look at every day. Another thing I started doing is that I started a garden, and I think many of you will remember uh, these are just scrap, these are just the bottoms of like uh, fruits and vegetables that I bought, but they were 10 inches two days ago and they're surpassed 12 inches already. So it's kind of exciting to see what's going to happen down at the end are my lettuces. But I wanted to share some of the books. This is the, the Steve Sims Blue Fishing book, The Art of Making Things Happen. This is Chris Noggle with Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery. Unlimited is The Law of Attraction with Sahar Mahoon. And... This last one, I'm going to kind of read this passage. This is Doc V. Oh, sorry, I'm moving. This is Doc V's book. He has a, a book called Weight Loss Surgery Success, and it's the A disease of weight loss. But he talks about perseverance. And perseverance has got a long race. It's, <laughs> I can't read. This purple light is interesting, but perseverance is not a long race. It is many short races, one after another, Walter Elliott. And this is from Doc V's book. And Doc V is the one that I'm in the weight loss challenge with. But I saw a passage that made me think about this today. Somebody in the Unlimited group posted a meme. And this was kind of, it made me think about this perseverance. If you look at this picture, it kind of says what a lot of us do to ourselves. There are two ladders. And if you make the wrongs of the ladder narrow enough and take baby steps one at a time, you're going to get a lot farther than if you create that ladder with the rungs so far apart that you can't reach the first level. So remember, we're not in this journey alone. We're not in this journey alone. There are tools out there. Find the tools that will help you on this journey. Be careful that if you're finding that you're feeling lonely, Reach out to somebody, find a group, read a book, do some ancestry research. Find something that you can be passionate about, something to maybe plan a trip for the future. Maybe put together a vision board, learn something about gardening. What about a new recipe? Uh, Sandy 2.5, uh, I've mentioned her before. She's actually teaching us and doing an accountability for keeping your food right and learning to cook 
with better choices of food. So there are tools out there and all you have to do is reach out. And if there's any way that I can help any of you guys, let me know because I wanna help everybody. Hi, Tommy. Um, I wanna help everybody that I can on this journey. This journey has been difficult for me, but I am so grateful to be on this side of it. And it was humbling when my doctor said, if there's things you can do to help others, reach out because we're not alone in this weight loss journey. And at the end of this, we're coming around to Ben and I want us all to reach for amazing new opportunities. So remember, don't let loneliness get to you. Reach out to somebody because we're all here for each other. There are tools, there are online groups, there are friends, there are plenty of opportunities. And you just might find out something that you didn't know. It was so exciting for me to find out the story of my great grandparents and how they ended up coming here and some of the things they faced. It, it made me see my grandfather in a whole new way, a man barely 20 years old and he was left with no parents and two younger siblings, because the youngest one had passed a month before the, my grandfather's father passed. But it was interesting, and it made me see him in such a different light. Um, I wish he was here for me to talk to now, but in my heart I know he knows I know. And thank you for sharing this journey. It's a beautiful world, it's a beautiful life, and grab on, enjoy it. Thanks, bye-bye.